Good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday. You'll have to pardon me if I have hiccups. <laughs> I've been trying to get rid of them. So, um, let me just see here. Um, yeah, I have this little, uh, this cute little chickadee uh, picture that I got from unsplash.com. <clears throat> pardon me. I may need to get a glass of water. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, and so I have this cute little chickadee that I want to paint this morning. Um, I'm going to start, I'm not going to do a, a fancy background or anything like that on this guy. I'm just really going to focus more on the bird and creating the, the softness and the form of the bird um, as I go. Good morning, Jan. Hi, Dorothy. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas. <clears throat> um, all right, so I haven't drawn this one out. I thought I would talk about the drawing process as well and uh, how how the, the main shapes, you know, come into this. So this little guy has kind of a round chest here. The head is also a little bit more of an oval. Like you, I see a lot of people, and they make perfectly round heads. But this guy's head's a little bit of an oval. <clears throat> and um, and the body actually comes down a little bit further. So so I'm starting to ease into my shapes here. I will draw everything pretty lightly until until I'm comfortable with the accuracy of the placement and size and proportions and things like that. So I don't want to start putting in dark lines or start detailing and adding eyes and all of that kind of thing in here until I know that, you know, I've, I'm pretty, pretty close. Now my camera is not liking all this white paper. Let me put, let me put my, um, my brushes back here. Uh, when the camera sees a lot of white paper, it tries to focus on something and it, it struggles. So I'm just going to put those uh, brushes in the picture here for a second. Um, <clears throat> I had a, a kind of a interesting Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, uh, I, I'm in uh, isolation. <laughs> Uh, we had some friends that uh, tested positive, and uh, we were in contact with them, so it means that uh, we had to get tested. No results yet. It's been five days, and I still don't have results. But, um, yeah, we shall see. All right, so this tail. Now, you you might be tempted to put the tail something like this, right? But have a good look at this picture here. Um, this picture I, re I take, took from Unsplash, and let me just find out who the photographer is here, Patrice Bouchard. Okay, Patrice Bouchard is the uh, photographer of this uh, really nice little picture here that I'm drawing. And, um, and you might be tempted to start one leg here and one leg here, but take a close look at this picture. I mean, really, it's there's a foot coming out of the chest. It's actually not coming out of the chest, of course, but you know, you really have to look at. Gosh, where is this coming from? Um, it doesn't come from here. It is coming on a little bit of an angle here, like so. A very strange uh, foot position. I mean, we as humans would not really think of our legs contorting in this way but birds have so little weight to them um, you know they are actually able to do um, quite this acrobatic <laughs> pose so um, yeah okay so I'm fairly confident that my proportions are pretty good now I'm going to start refining things now so once I get the main shapes in I start refining and um, so 
So again, I'm still I'm still going lightly here and I will tune things up once I get sort of a good idea of how I've placed everything. I think that should come forward a little bit more. Very small adjustment there. I also don't want to make a lot of really dark, dark lines on my um, on my paper because if I'm painting a light area, you know, like like this cheek area here, for example, I don't want a dark pencil line that's showing underneath. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gabe. Hi, Isabel, Jan, Karen, Marilyn. Uh, oh, thank you, everybody, for jo for joining. I hope you all had a really nice Christmas. Um, oh, you're in isolation too, Jan. Oh, that's too too bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mild symptoms here as well. Um. Yeah. It kind of seems like this new variant. Everybody's going to get it at some point. <laughs> Uh, but thankfully, uh, this new variant doesn't pack the punch that the initial one did. And, uh, you know, we're not ending up in hospitals and um, <clears throat> on ventilators and, God forbid, uh, the, you know, worse. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so here we go. Getting some things tuned up here. Okay, so now I think I'm fairly confident this is good uh, drawing. Uh, my drawing's okay now. The only thing I don't have in here is this little branch. So I want to indicate the branch here. Um, there's, a, there's this little bud. I'm going to move this bud um, down to here a little bit more, just so it doesn't interfere with the tummy of our bird. Um, <clears throat> where the buds are on the uh, branch is not really too crucial, I don't think. Cute little guy, yeah. Alright, so then there's a wing here that's got to wrap around the, the body here. So there's bit of a wing shape there and I'm going to try to do this without an extreme amount of detail today um, the only place I'm going to put uh, you know extra detail is going to be in the facial area because the face is of course the focal point uh, let me just grab my eraser here. Now the my favorite eraser for watercolor paper is a kneaded eraser and the reason I like a kneaded eraser is because I can lighten up my lines. It is winter and my, my kneaded eraser needs, needs kneading so um, get it stretched out and warmed up a little bit it'll work better so warm it up in your hands, stretch it out, get the cleanish areas uh, where they can pick up the excess. All right, so I can erase a few lines where I've got sort of multiple working lines there. I can, I can erase some of those. I don't have to re erase everything. I do know that some of this area is going to be dark, so I don't need to uh, go too crazy with uh, erasing. Now beak shape. Very important. Um, wh whenever you're doing any kind of a bird, really get that beak shape um, correct. You don't want to have it extra long, extra pointy, if that's not the type of beak that that particular bird has. Uh, you know, and, and I see a lot of uh, people that will, they'll, they'll paint their bird and then they go to paint it and it gets too long so it gets it grows and grows and grows and before you know it you got Jimmy Durante and um, <clears throat> so I've got uh, 
And this placement of this eye has to be right at the bottom of this this marking here. This marking kind of dips down a little bit right underneath the eye. Um, and the little beard or chest marking there. Uh, now the challenge here with feathers, of course, and you, see, you can see it right here, is that it's not just, it's not like a straight line, you know, I, I, the basic shape is a straight line, but the actual painting won't be, um, won't be uh, such a straight edge there. Um, okay, so if, if you struggle with the drawing, because uh, Marilyn, that's what you were saying, is that you struggle with the drawing and it always lets you down. First of all, get a sketchbook and practice, work on your drawing. You know, that there's no substitute for practice. I think you just got to keep working at it. Um, you know, January is coming, right? <clears throat> Why not take up a January drawing challenge? There's loads of them around. You're, you know, I think, um, oh, Doodle Wash has one. I mean, if you look on social media, there's going to be a drawing challenge somewhere. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to do one myself. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter how, how long you've been drawing, you still want to keep it up, right? So you want to keep it up and uh, keep your drawing skills honed because... Uh, it can really uh, make a big difference in your final painting. If you don't have a strong drawing, you, you're not going to have a strong painting. So um, keep that up. But, you know, in the meantime, what do you do in the meantime if you want to paint something? Well, you can actually take your printed copy and um, place a piece of um, graphite paper underneath and, and actually trace the outline of it if, if you find that helpful. But don't rely on that because... Uh, your understanding of the painting process will be greatly improved uh, if, if you learn to draw. So definitely keep up the drawing skills. Don't just rely on forever tracing your, your uh, photographs. You'll be a slave to your photo for one thing. You won't be able to make edits and, and that sort of thing. But it won't feel authentically yours. And I, I think more and more I'm really feeling that, you know, when I paint something, I want it to be authentically mine, you know, from start to finish, including the drawing. I want every part of it to be my own. Now, these little feet are not like people feet, for sure. They're, they're a little bit like, uh, they're a little bit like branches, right? they they're kind of got this texture on them and all that kind of thing. And uh, they're definitely not shaped like people feet. So they're like one little toe here. And I see another little bit at the top. And the leg actually comes down here towards the branch. It's kind of hidden there a little bit, but I'm going to draw that in. I won't put too much detail into it because, um, like I said, all the detail is going to end up in the face, not the, not the, um, the feet. <laughs> um, but typically, most birds uh, will have three toes forward, one toe behind. Um, now, sometimes when, when they're in a position like this little guy is, and their, their uh, branch is on a, almost a vertical and they're clinging to it, their feet get kind of bunched up, their toes get bunched up. So in this case, we've got kind of these bunched up toes right here as, as the pressure of the weight is pulling down on the, the little bird, so, or on the feet. <clears throat> okay, so there's my drawing. And uh, let's jump into some painting here. So. When I start painting this, I'm going to begin with um, some of my lighter tones. And I want to, really want to be looking for some, um, you know, some, some color in here, right? We think of chickadees as black and white, but there's a lot of 
well, there's clearly a lot of kind of a yellowy gold in there. Um, and But look at the back of the head. All right, see at the back of the head there, I see blue. I see blue there. And when you have a white bird and a very white background, so if I left this background white, um, the background, the bird is actually going to blend into my background. So by using a little bit of blue, I can actually get a bit of an edge. I'm going to remove a little bit more of my pencil line here. The stuff I don't need, not all of it, of course. And uh, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit more and hopefully it'll stay focused. There we go. All right, so there's my drawing. You can see it's, you know, I've got some little marks everywhere. Um, I don't have to clean it up, you know, to perfection. I don't actually mind a little bit of pencil mark showing in my paintings. Uh, to me, it's a little bit of a trademark of being handmade, right? So I think that uh, I don't mind seeing it at all. So I am going to wet this part of the bird, the white face area. Actually, I have a little bit of color in my brush, but that doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to come right down into all of this. Um, right into this whole chest area here, and I'm going to start putting in some of the tones for the white feathers. So with a little bit of, uh, this is uh, cobalt blue. I'm going to put a little cobalt blue back here. Um, I'm not worrying about individual feathers at this point. What I am looking at is the placement of where I'm seeing these cool tones. So now I'm talking color temperature. Okay, so I'm not really talking about whether it's light or dark. I'm talking about color temperature cool or warm. Blues are cool, yellows and reds are warm. So as I start to come down into the sides here, I can start coming into maybe a little bit of raw sienna um, and put some of that in here. Let's not get too carried away here, but I'm going to come in with some raw sienna here, a little bit over here too. So I've really got sort of that warm, cool thing going on. And uh, I think I'm even going to, I'm going to wet this head and carry this blue right up into the area that's going to end up being black. I'm going to carry that right up on into there. Right, and the blue's down in here. Right, just so they're not stark stark white. We'll put some blues in there too. Now these are going to be darker afterwards, but for the time being we have um, some underpainting here with the blue. And the reason I wanted to paint that blue is because I don't want my highlights in the black to be stark bright white. It would look really strange for that to happen. So, um, yeah, let's, let's come in here with a little bit of this, even the, even the beak. There's nothing in the beak that's actually pure white. I know we, it does have a highlight, but it's not pure white, so I'm not going to leave it white. Um, all right, so currently it, it almost looks like a little bluebird, but... I'm going to be coming in with some other um, shades in here as well. And uh, once the darks start coming in here, then uh, the, the uh, areas that, I mean, all of this will not look like it's blue anymore, or it won't look like it's dark anymore. Now, as I'm adding in a little bit more blue, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm adding in some um, 
just a few little strokes in the direction of the fur growth, or feather growth, I should say. Um, but feather or fur would be treated very similarly. All right. So I've hardly got anything in my brush at the moment, and I am using what am I using here? A number eight squirrel hair brush has a nice point, holds lots of water, although there's not much in it at the moment. I have very little in my brush currently. So I'm just putting in a few strokes, and the reason my brush is a little bit drier at this point is so I don't create blossoms. Um, okay, so things are still kind of damp. I'm going to start introducing a little bit of Payne's Gray. All right, so a little bit of Payne's Gray will go a long way here. So I have to use it very sparingly. Let's blot my brush off, hardly anything at all. And I'm going to start to identify some of the that that edge on the beak. You see how, or not the beak, the um, marking underneath uh, from the beak down onto the the throat here, where it has you know this uh, dark area here. So I'm coming down. This is Payne's Gray I'm using, and. I've hardly got any in my brush. Now why I've hardly got any in is so that it doesn't sort of melt and um, blow out this shape. Now I want to paint carefully around the eye because as I said I'm going to keep the details for the face. So I want to paint very carefully around the eye. I'm going to leave a little, little bit of a lighter area right sort of where that bend of the head is. Okay, so the head starts to bend backwards. Right? It comes up the, up the forehead and then it starts going along the top of the head. So there's a little change of plane there which is where the highlight's usually going to end up being. So it's going to end up being right sort of above the eye and straight across here. And if if you're not looking for that kind of thing, you might be tempted to just sort of fill in the whole um, section. But you've got to leave the highlights behind in watercolor. If we were painting in acrylic or oil or you know one of those mediums, yeah, the highlight would be added on, but you're not going to do that in watercolor. Um, so I'm taking a little bit more Payne's Gray here, and this is where I'm really using, you see I'm using that really sharp point on my brush here. I'm really going to shape this eye as carefully as I can. Now there is a highlight in the eye, so I want to work around it. This is the hold your breath part, right? Where you're working in a little detail here. Okay, so. There we go. Let's, uh, let's get a little detail on the beak too here. I see. Now that separation for the upper and lower beak, it's a little bit curved. You know, little funny things like that, especially, you know, bird anatomy, you've got to watch for that sort of thing. And I think I actually have that beak maybe a little bit low, but we'll see. Um, and again, I'm going to just be really careful with the placement of these darks. And I'm really going to pay attention as well to edges. So things like right here, I'm going to just rinse my brush and soften some of this. Right? Where the feathers are, I want to keep the softness there. So <clears throat> that's what I want to um, pay attention to. 
and with birds, and I would say this is probably the case for 99% of the birds that I've painted, is that there's a little rim around the eye. And it's not white, but there is a little gap between the eye and the uh, surrounding feathers. You know, like an eyelid. So there's a little tiny bit of the eye that does not have um, feathers, right? It doesn't have feathers right up to the eyeball. So and all these strokes, they're all in the direction of the fur. Feathers. <laughs> I keep saying feathers. Um, What's it doing up in Panatanguishim, Beth? You've, we've got uh, a little dusting of snow down here in uh, southern Ontario, but not too much. Not much at all. It was definitely a green Christmas. Actually, we were very happy for this mild weather we had over the holidays because um, my kids were able to come over and we were able to stay way far apart on our front porch, which is covered. It was raining, but it was uh, very mild and quite comfortable outside. So, you know, that was one blessing, I guess, that we, you know, did manage to have um, a visit despite everything. Um, okay, so that you can see this highlight area that I'm leaving behind here. Um, the placement isn't that great. I haven't done such a excellent job there or anything, but uh, it's there. Now I want to do the lower beak as well. So I'm doing the lower beak a little separately so that this this didn't run together. I wanted to keep them separate. So looking very closely at the shape, is it a straight line or has it got a slight curve to it? And I think it does have a slight curve to it. I think actually my eye might be a little tiny. I think I have to make it just slightly larger a little more like it, I think. That's making a little more sense. My drawing here is probably a little larger than true life. Um, chickadees are a little bit smaller than this, at least the ones around here are. Alright, so I really want to try not to have too much of a cardboard cutout look here. So as I come along these edges, I'm going to, uh, pardon the pun, but I'm going to feather them in. So I'm going to just tickle this edge here and get this a little bit softer. Come in maybe with a little bit more, a little bit more dark here, and all right. So for this little area around the neck, um, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to come in, working around that beak area there, and it's really quite dark underneath here. Um, this particular reference looks like looks like this little guy's got some snow on him, and uh, I believe this has been um, edited in Photoshop uh, because the background is so out of focus, but yet there's and there's snow on the bird, but there's none in the air. So I think the background has been blurred in Photoshop, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but this edge here. I want to have this a little bit um, indicative of the texture of the feathers. Okay, so it's I'm putting in little tiny, tiny strokes here, so that this doesn't become a cardboard cutout edge. So come in here, keep keep putting in the same sort of strokes. 
and I can leave I can leave a few little gaps in here um, which will indicate the uh, you know the directional um, flow of the feathers Now I only decided to do this little guy <laughs> about uh, 15 minutes before I came live here. <laughs> Talk about winging it. Uh, no pun intended again. Very punny today. Um, but these edges, I really want to indicate that this is feathers and not a uh, a cardboard cutout, so I really want to do that. Uh, yeah, most oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was a fairly gray day here as well um, for Christmas, but I guess there's not going to be too many New Year's parties happening this year. Just when we thought. We were going to be in the clear, but I'm I'm hopeful that 2022 is going to be the year we see this thing fizzle out. That would be so nice, wouldn't it? All right, so I am now going to pick up a little bit more Payne's Gray here, and I'm thinning it down a bit because I don't want it quite as dark as what I did here on the throat, and I'm going to start indicating these. Uh, wing feathers. Now the wing feathers are in a strange perspective because we're seeing the roundness of the bird and we're, we're sort of seeing a side profile of these feathers. So you see um, some kind of curves that come down here, but it's really hard to make out what is exactly happening here. So I'm going to imply it, but I'm not going to fuss about trying to define it and uh, that's important to know, right? You don't have to define everything in your painting for the viewer. You don't have to. People know what a chickadee is, and they know that if you put some soft lines here, that that's supposed to be the wing. They'll know it. Um, you know, familiarity will tell them what this is supposed to be. So I, I can just hint at a few lines like that and get away with it. Now the underside of the, the wing here is a little bit darker, so let me pick up a little bit more color. And I'm going to come under here with the shape of the wing. But here's this hard line again, so I want to soften my brush, or rinse my brush and blot it and get this line softened up, right? Because even though I'm painting the wing, it's the feathers here that I need to pay attention to. And if these become crisp, they're not going to look very soft. So I am trying to soften up this edge and make um, more of a transition here. So I'm going to do something similar down here on the tail. Now the tail, the tail's out of focus. Right? When, you, when you look at this reference here, uh, the tail is actually out of focus because of the, um, you know, our focus is on the face. So let's paint this in, but I'm going to kind of soften it out and uh, let it sort of blend into my background. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm going to take this edge here, and I'm just going to sort of tickle that edge and get that edge softened up. I really don't want the detail there. I'm going to put a few hits of a, something a little bit darker while this is still wet, and this can uh, just sort of melt into what it, what's already wet there. And... Just rinse and blend it in. Um, really want to keep the softness of this uh, 
sort of out of focus element here. We've got this uh, And people will know that's a tail. No matter no matter whether it's blurry or not detailed, they'll know that it is a tail feather. And just because you can do it detailed doesn't mean you should. <laughs> so, uh, and that's I think a hard lesson for a lot of people to learn is that you know you can do it, so let's do it. <laughs> and it's really not needed. Um, so I'm going to come in with, um, no, hardly any, you can see here on my palette, I've, I'm really thinning down that Payne's Gray. But you can see it's just super pale. And I'm going to imply some of the feathers in here. Some flip out outward, right? and some come inward. So I'm really kind of taking a close look here at the direction. But the reason I need to do this super light is to maintain the softness of this uh, this chest area, this the belly feathers. Won't, won't look soft if I do this in really harsh um, you know, strong contrast and that sort of thing. So I need to keep this super light, um, not indicating every feather, of course, I'm just implying them. And there's actually a lot of this on the face as well. So let's get, let's get this little section in here implied with a lot of this same sort of thing. Now I can put a few strokes on, let it dry, and then add a few more. But right now I'd rather kind of take it slow and easy and, and maintain the softness of this uh, these feathers without jumping in with a big value change and uh, kind of destroying the effect. All right, so I'm going to leave that to dry, and while I do, I'm going to come down here to these these creepy looking feet. <laughs> Birds do have pretty unattractive feet, that's for sure. Um, but it is very light gray, same same sort of gray that I used up here, but just really really light because I'm going to be. Um, adding the darks in and, and there are some very light areas on here but not pure white so <clears throat> I'm going to come in with a little bit more gray it's a little darker right here under the belly uh, this little part here is a little bit darker because it it's kind of like he's got one foot up and the other foot down and just using the tip of my brush I can imply some of the some of the detail almost using like a little uh, pen here almost using my brush like a pen take a little bit extra color off my brush here and I'm just going to hint at some of that texture in there just touching it in um, and, and letting that be kind of a broken line Like I said, I'm not going to slavishly try to make a, um, a reproduction of the photograph here. I am implying more of a painterly bird um, with a, a level of realism, a degree of level of realism, but without um, going too crazy. All right, so hinting at some of that texture again. Those squished up toes, <laughs> pretty hard to indicate those, but they're just kind of squished up together there. And yeah, he's cute, that's for sure. 
All right, so I'm going to come back in and just keep building up some of these darks. Look where it's extra dark. So, you know, right, right back here, it's extra dark, right in front where the plane changes are happening, that's where you're going to see these subtle differences with black. Right. I can actually see it more on the screen than I can on my painting because I have a light directly in front of me to be well lit for the camera, but it's glaring at my eyes. <laughs> uh. Just a little bit of fuss here and there. Um, and there's kind of a funny little area right here. Okay, right, right in this sort of an intersection, I guess you might call it, where, where the beak and the forehead and the chin, chin all kind of converge toward, towards the beak here. What happens with the feathers is they start to, um, like, they're short, of course, and, and they come towards you instead of, you know, being laid laid upon the, you know, sideways upon the the um, the uh, head here. So basically, the feathers are coming straight off of the the face, and what what that ends up looking like is kind of little dots. So I'm going to put in a few little dots in here not too harshly. Uh, let's blot it to make sure that it's not too strong. And um, so when feathers come towards you, it's, let me get a mop brush here so I can show it to you. So if I hold this mop brush sideways, the bristles go like this. If I point it directly at the camera, now it may not, it might have trouble focusing on that. Uh, it is going to have trouble focusing on it. Let's get this out of the way. There we go. Okay, so directly at the camera, these become little dots, and the foreshortening of the feathers means that they will become little specks like that. So you can actually create the form of your bird. Or your dog or your cat or your you know horse or whatever it is you're painting right you can create the form um, partially with this technique right so you the direction of the strokes imply the uh, the type of direction that the feathers or the fur are growing so not every feather. Not every hair on a dog or a cat, for example, will lie flat against the the skin, right? It, sometimes it sticks out. Um, so let, let's do some of that here, right? So this, this looks, neck looks like it comes right down and connects to the um, to the shoulder, shall we say. But I need to start to indicate that there's an actual kind of curve here and a separate curve here. It's very, very subtle difference, but it's enough to show now that this, this part here from this line up is head and this part is shoulder. Otherwise, it didn't really have any, dif um, there was nothing to dif differentiate that. Subtle things, right? Subtle things. Oops, kind of went a little heavy there. And um, I'm just going to keep adding in a little bit more of this, um, this texture here where it sort of transitions into the shoulder. It's kind of messy like that. Um, okay, so not too much more to do on the actual bird itself. It's not that I couldn't, but I think if I continued on that
this could very easily get overworked. So I'm not going to continue on indefinitely. I'm going to look at this branch now. And I see a little bit, believe it or not, some of the highlights on this branch are a little bit on the bluish side. So that's a little strange, isn't it, being as it's a, um, a brown branch. It is very kind of orangey brown kind of color. And then the highlights are kind of blue. And mainly that is probably partly because there's, it maybe have a little bit of frost on it, but also because it's shiny. And so it's shiny and it's going to be picking up a little bit of um, reflected light from sky and snow and, and things like that. So this edge here, it's going to be a little bit blue and I'm just going to let those two colors kiss in order to uh, to imply that highlight. Now this blue is very thinned. It's, um, you know, there's not much pigment in here at all, but it's, the idea here is to have that transition from warm to cool. So, burnt sienna, and if I mix them together, I'm really just gonna get brown. And let's go above the, above the leg here too, the foot. I'm just going to let that run off there. I don't see the rest of that in this photo, so I'm just going to have to invent it. Come in with that blue again. Very thin. Really want to keep it light and just add a little bit of blue on that one side. Strange, huh? That in the winter you can often get uh, this really cool, cool highlights. Uh, depends on the time of day, but if it's midday, you're going to get cool highlights. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more of this this uh, burnt sienna color in the bird itself as well. So I'm going to come in. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to keep building up a little bit more on the the stem itself or the branch and uh, and then I'm going to come in and re-wet some of this clean water here and over here I'm just going to go clean water on the whole thing not just one section but the whole thing and I'm going to come in with a bit of burnt sienna in here just to get this a little bit warmer. I want to make sure I don't get hard edges here, so I'm dampening to make things soft. Alright, so I'll just keep coming in with a little bit of implied detail uh, on the branch. Not actual detail, just implied. So changing up the, the values a little bit, making some darks in here, that sort of thing. And if I want to make a brown, I'd simply take my blue, mix it with my burnt sienna, and I get a brown out of that. That's cobalt blue and burnt sienna to make brown. So brown and blue will make, or burnt sienna and blue will make brown. Okay, and to, a little shadow underneath each foot here to really, let's get a little gray in here, Payne's gray mixed with that, and I want to get a little extra dark right underneath each foot um, to make it have contact and create a shadow on the branch from the feet. Really get those things connected. 
Okay, so that was a quick one today. I think um, I could go into all kinds of um, detail, but I think I think a lot of detail could really kill this one. Uh, I really want to keep this soft and um, simple looking, right? I, I want I want the simplicity in this case. So um, I'm going to dry it. And then what I'll do is I will just lift up a few of the, see these pencil lines here, although I don't mind them, I think I could take those off. So I'm going to mute and just dry this, take me two seconds. And now, just to get rid of any of the pencil lines. Now, some of the pencil lines, once the um, once they've been wet, are more difficult to erase. But some of them I can get rid of here. There's definitely some that are around the outsides and things like that I can get rid of. There we go. All right, so um, that's that's my little chickadee for today. Um, if I wanted, again, if I wanted this to look even whiter, because right now it looks a little blue, but if I wanted it to look a little whiter, a darker background would certainly um, do the trick here. So I could put in, uh, you know, a snowy background or autumn colors or anything like that. Um, chickadees pretty much uh, look the same in the winter as they do in the summer. I think and um, so they don't change like you know goldfinches uh, tend to lose their brilliant colors and become a little bit more uh, gray in the winter months but um, the uh, chickadees stay the same and you know this this is looking a little messy and painterly but I actually like that you know I, I just because I can do it detailed doesn't mean I want to or should Right? Sometimes that's uh, that's that's a call that you make as an artist. Is you don't always have to detail everything. Anyway, so I'm going to wrap this one up for today. And um, thank you so much. If you don't subscribe, or if you're just you know if you're lurking there somewhere, you can, <laughs> and you want to see my my weekly uh, YouTube live, then by all means, um, you know subscribe uh, or like the video or something like that. And uh, uh, what happens when you do that is that uh, YouTube has a tendency to show it to show more of my videos to you and to other people so it helps me it helps you and um, if you aren't aware I do them every Wednesday I also have um, weekly zoom workshops that um, I offer they're more full length you get you get the reference picture you get uh, line drawing materials list uh, definitely more in-depth uh, longer and access to the video indefinitely um, so you can um, you know check that out my website is right here shellyprior.com and uh, I want to wish every one of you a happy and safe happy new years take care everybody have a great week bye